Boom. There we go. How you doing, handsome? Good, man. How are you? That's the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me on one of these. You see, you see what happens? Man, this is off to a great start. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good, man. How are you? I'm uh, I'm good. I appreciate you taking some time to uh, to do this. New album is coming out. I know we've got a we've got a lot to talk about, but I think we need to you know kind of start at the beginning. Your career starts in the in the metalcore scene up in the Northeast. Play with the Acacia Strain. You play with some Michigan bands. Being from Saginaw, I know that as well. For the Fallen Dreams and, and Legend, and then you sort of you transition to producing. You transition to to songwriting. So you work with Bad Wolves then. How do we end up where we are now, where you're taking over lead vocals for Bad Wolves? Well, uh, so during my time kind of doing behind the scenes and the creative work, um, I had done a podcast with Doc, Doc's X-Men podcast, which he still does. And, um, uh, you know, after our conversation, we just kind of hopped on the phone for a minute and, just you know, talked turkey for a minute, just, just caught up a little bit and... Um, I think at that point, uh, I just kind of sent, he asked me what I was doing and I, I sent him a demo that I had done. Uh, it was just like for my own seven dust fandom. So I, I had done like a cover of uh, seven dust skeleton song and I sent that to him. And that was kind of the first time that he heard me kind of clean sing. And that was maybe his like, kind of like, what the, what the heck kind of moment. And um, he was like, that's you. So, so kind of, you know, fast forward to when they were looking for a singer. I don't know if he kept that demo or what, or he might've still had it. I think it still might've been on YouTube or something at the time. And, um, you know, they, they started looking and maybe he brought that to the band's attention. I believe he, he showed John and at, at which point John gave me a call and that kind of got the ball rolling, you know, the rest is history after that. I assume you went through an, an audition process of sorts, just like any other singer hoping to get this gig would, what was it like those first few times playing with the guys? Did it feel, you know, that first time, that second time, like, yeah, this, this works. I can do this. Yeah. So like we, you know, as uh, just the band and myself, we all kind of agreed going into it that, um, you know, the band absolutely exhausts all their options and really just like look out, uh, you know, see, see what's out there in terms of talent. Um, because, you know, uh, looking for a new singer in a band of their stature, it's just, um, it's nerve wracking. It's, it's a shaky time, but at the same time, it, it's a opportunity for them to really kind of stretch their legs and, and um, possibly, you know, reinvent the band or, or do some things with the band that they may have not done in the past. So um, that was definitely the, the biggest point moving forward, the traditional tryout process. And, uh, you know, beyond that, uh, I think uh, they sent me three instrumentals. Um, I believe I might be kind of wrong, but I, I'm pretty sure they were, I'll be there no Messiah and better off this way. Uh, they sent me the instrumental, the uh, instrumentals of those. And since I have a studio and I'm, I'm the ability to kind of track things pretty quickly, I put those together and I got them back to them with the vocals on them uh, within like 24 hours. So I think I, I was probably one of the first submissions out of the, uh, the whole tryout process for the band and everything. And, um, you know, fast forward a couple months, they were kind of talking to a bunch of people and everything. And I ended up in the, uh, you know, the last kind of group of five or so people. And um, at that point, they, they invited me to come out and rehearse with them. And um, I think, you know, that was really kind of the, the, the turning point for everybody. Um, finally, just getting into a, a room together and, um, you know, almost, almost instantly feeling that, that connection. Um, you know, it, it, there was, there was kind of an undeniable chemistry once we all got into a room and, and, uh, after even not seeing each other for so long, just kind of talking crap to each other and having some laughs, like, you know, right off rip. So, um, you know, and then, you know, even beyond that, after rehearsal, we, we went out to dinner, had some drinks and kind of put the band stuff aside for a minute and just got to, you know, caught up with each other. And that was, I mean, you know, I don't want to speak for the band, um, but definitely for myself, that was a big turning point. I, I, cause you know, the band was trying me out and, and I was trying the band out as well. And, um, you know, leaving dinner that night, I was just like, yeah, I love these guys. I want to do this. Let's, let's go. So, um, yeah. I'm sure it's difficult being the, the new guy in any established band, but I feel like there's an extra weight added when you're the new lead singer of a band that has already had some success. You're the guy up front. You're the guy everybody's watching. Do you, do you think about that when you start this process, when the auditions start and you realize like you're going to be the focal point of this band that's already had a couple of hits, sold a couple of records, played some really big shows? Um, I mean, yes, but, but 
it, it wasn't really the the front of my mind, honestly. Um, you know, I think this group is special in a way where, um, especially, you know, moving forward with, with me now being in the band and stuff, uh, you know, every guy in this band is a star. I, I swear to God. And, um, you know, John's one of the best drummers I've ever played with. Doc and Chris are the best guitar players I've ever played. So it's just like, you know, it's, it's one of those things where I think, you know, especially moving forward and, um, where we're at in our career and everything, it's just, uh, there's not one guy that's more important than the next in this group. So, so that's just, uh, we're all, we're all there at the same, same tier, man. We're all, we're all in the spotlight together. So it's, uh, it's definitely like a, 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 a big family vibe for sure. I can't imagine that joining a band during a pandemic is easy with that said, probably beneficial for you guys in the band to have some time to get to know each other because you weren't out playing shows. You weren't out on the road. It wasn't like they thrust you into the spot. You had the chance to get to know each other. You haven't played a show, you know, in front of people yet. I don't think uh, with the band. So I can imagine that, you know, yes, the pandemic sucked and is, is awful, but for you guys and for bad wolves, it, it ended up being maybe that time off was maybe a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have um, kind of touched upon that where, uh, I've just been saying that, that really the pandemic, I mean, as awful as it was for a lot of people and, and, you know, the loss of life and, and there was just so many crappy aspects to it, but, but, um, in terms of the band and what we were able to accomplish during the time off with the pandemic and everything, uh, it really was like a, a kind of a blessing in disguise, to be honest with you. Um, you know, the, the, the normal, uh, the normal, record process or, or the normal just making of a record and you know everything that kind of comes with that is usually um more often than not it's, it's a pretty stressful process you know uh you're trying to make deadlines and um you know there's there's a lot that goes into it and there's a lot of uh kind of hurry up and wait and, and those kind of things so um you know there's been so many records that i've even been a part of where you listen to it after the fact it's out you're done and you, you kind of take that like last listen before you let it go and you're like man all the finals are turned in. I wish we could have done that part differently, or I wish I could have changed this or that. And really with, with dear monsters, um, that's just not the case because we, we had that added luxury of, uh, just having that, you know, finish a song and revisit it a month or two later, and then, you know, make whatever revisions we'd want to. So we, we really had, uh, like I said, the, the luxury of the extra time to really kind of make the exact album we wanted. And, uh, I think, you know, in our eyes, this is the perfect Bad Wolves album. You mentioned the new album, Dear Monsters. It's just a few hours away from uh, from coming out, which has got to be exciting for for Bad Wolves fans that, you know, are are wondering what this, this new version of Bad Wolves is going to sound like. How do you think this album stacks up against the, the previous two and what they know of that, uh, what they know of the band? So uh, really just to kind of generalize um, for, for even a new listener coming in, um, that's never heard Bad Wolves before. Um, this record, uh, I think, you know, we really just wanted to make it a point to have it be a step forward for the band and um, maybe somewhat of a, a mature, more mature effort. And um, we just wanted to kind of broaden the horizons of the band. So, um, you know, in the sense of the band's heavy side, you know, I would say that the, the heavy material on this album is the heaviest that battles has ever done. Um, and then on the other side of that coin, you know, I would say that it's some of the softest, most beautiful stuff that the band has ever done. So we really just wanted to, you know, stretch that horizon. You know, it's interesting. Bad Wolves is always a band. And I remember, you know, when, when zombie came out and then people heard the album and they expected everything to sound a certain way. And right. the, the Bad Wolves sound is not, you know, the radio singles are not indicative of what Bad Wolves is completely because the band is very, very heavy and people might be a little bit surprised by that. Yeah. Um, you know, I think it's it's a it's a wonderful thing, especially, you know, with Bad Wolves, where um, it's a rare thing, actually, you know, where, where a band, uh, you know, talking on our new record, where a band can do a song like On The Case, which is like, you know, borderline Meshuggah style heavy, if anybody knows who that band is. And then, you know, and then there's a song like Springfield Summer that that kind of is like a crossover song, like a pop R&B uh, country kind of hybrid song. So, um, yeah, I think it's a rare kind of beautiful thing that that Bad Wolves has that they they have the ability to um, 
you know, kind of just do whatever we want. And I really, you know, especially with this album and um, me coming into the band and moving forward now from, from this point, um, you know, that's, I, I think I'm, I would say that they've always done that, but I can speak on this record uh, particularly that, you know, moving forward, we first and foremost, from here on out, we absolutely will write for ourselves. And that that's just our biggest thing. You know, it's like, we want to put together material that we can be fans of and we can listen to and we enjoy. So like, you know, there's no, there's no really, um, there's no, no, not too much intention uh, when it comes to writing anymore. It's just, we just write what we, what we want to be fans of and what we want to listen to. And, and uh, everything beyond that's just kind of extra. Do you feel like you coming into the band sort of gave the band a, a, I don't want to say a, a resurgence, a renaissance, a rebirth of sorts that you guys were able to maybe do some things that Bad Wolves hadn't done in the past because now you have this new voice coming in, this new set of ideas coming in. I mean, you have the the production experience. Do you think you guys were able to maybe do some things a little bit different that maybe wouldn't have happened previously? Yeah, I think you actually, uh, you nailed that one on the head. It, it was actually, you know, like I had even mentioned during the tryout process and everything, that was, that was a big point for the band that, you know, um, it's just exciting to be able to, uh, almost, um, you know, it's, I don't look at it as, a, uh, I'm, I'm feeling the former guy's shoes or any of this. Like, it's like, we're putting on a new pair, right? It's like the bad wolves 2.0. I've heard that a lot. So, um, it almost feels like, although it's still bad wolves and it was, a, it was a big conscious effort to, um, maintain the integrity of what bad wolves is with the, you know, the heavy instrumentals and, you know, the, the big soaring hooky choruses and everything. We, we wanted to maintain that, but we just wanted to add some, some new layers, especially like you had mentioned um, with my vocal. Uh, it's, it's pretty new. It's stylistically different than what they're, they're they've been doing in the past. And, uh, and that kind of lent itself to being able to do songs like Springfield summer and stuff, which, which like you had said, they, they may have not done that in the past. So yeah, absolutely. Coming in as, as the new guy, how involved were you in the writing process of the new album? Because I heard that the band had sort of started writing this album, Dear Monsters, before they had decided on who the next singer was going to be. How much were you involved once you were welcomed into the fold? So, uh, I mean, if I had to like put a, a number on that, I would say like I came in halfway through the writing process because, um, you know, they've been writing this record for upwards of two years. Um, I don't know if that's beyond what it really is but i would just say for, for the sake of it um yeah like upwards of two years and uh really you know kind of when i came to the fold the, the collaborative process between the band and i uh it really just kind of took place you know we really started chipping away at everything together once i came out to la to track the vocals for the record you know um at that point we, we really just started putting each song and each part of each song under a microscope and you know um making arrangement moves or or just having discussions about, you know, uh, where we, where we, where we would like the song to go. Um, even if it was kind of a finished thing, you know, especially with me bringing something new to the table stylistically with the vocals. Um, yeah, we just wanted to kind of make it all, make it all make sense and work. And, um, it's just, you know, it's crazy. Every guy in the band, once we got into the room together, it's like every guy in the band could be a producer. It's, it's pretty nuts. So, uh, it's refreshing and, and exciting. What's it like, you know, after y- you, you spend time on the road, you, you, you know, you play with the KC straight, you play with other bands and you go back behind the board, you're doing the producer thing. What's it like coming back out from behind the board and going back out? And now you're, now you're recording vocals, which I realize you've recorded vocals before, but I mean, I got to imagine it's a daunting task to go from production producing to now you're the guy who's singing vocals. Um, yeah, no, not so much of a daunting task, honestly, if anything, uh, you know, it's, it's the kind of situation where, uh, being a producer and, and really kind of critically listening to everything, I, I, it's kind of a, um, it's kind of a burden that producers bear, I suppose, you know, when you're even listening to something that you're looking forward to a new record that I'm looking forward to that you pick up. It's like, I, sometimes I can't listen to it, uh, the way that an average listener would. I, I, I really like, you know, you kind of separate things. You have that producer mindset, like you're just listening to the guitars or you're just, listening. so I, you know, it's like you have that kind of trained ear already. And, um, that was actually one of the things when I came into the studio to track vocals, that was like, you know, even first day, um, first day, first couple takes, it was like, I was producing myself almost in the booth, you know, and, um, and Joseph and John, you know, they all recognized that. And we were all just kind of laughing about it. They were like, this this freaking guy is like producing himself. So it's like, it's, it's kind of cool how that works. You know, it's, it's nice to, um, 
it's nice to have that kind of comfort in the studio because it's not always like that. And sometimes a lot of people, the studio can be um, pretty stressful. The first single from the album is uh, is Lifeline, which which certainly fits the the Bad Wolves mold. What is it about that song in particular that made you guys think, yeah, you know what, this should be the first release, this should be the first song, this should be DL's introduction to the world, so to speak? Uh, so yeah, I mean, we just, you know, it, this is the kind of record, and we tend to write this way, where every track on the album, all twelve, really could have been a single in their own in in some way, shape, or form. So uh, it, it was pretty. You know, it was a tricky one to, to kind of pick which one the reveal song, which first single is going to be. But um, you know, after after some some discussion with the label and between the band and everything, and we kind of we landed on Lifeline um, simply for the fact that um, it, it it really felt like it's that sweet spot song uh, that that uh, like I had mentioned maintains that that core Bad Wolf sound. It still has the heavy down tune guitars, grooving parts. You know, um but also kind of showcases uh, stylistically what I bring to the table, you know, with the kind of poppier vocal over, over the heavy parts. And um, yeah, I, we felt like it just kind of hit that, that middle spot of not too heavy, not too light. It just, it felt like a, a very uh, proper single uh, that it that it would be kind of indicative of, of what is uh, the rest of Dear Monsters. You've been releasing clips of songs from the album leading up to the release <coughs> up on, uh, on Friday. Is there, out of all the 12 songs coming out on Dear Monsters, is there one in particular that you're most proud of and that you're most excited for fans to hear? Yes. Uh, I had mentioned um, Springfield Summer. And, um, man, it was just – it was a, a song that kind of came in ninth inning. Um, we were actually, like, done, done with the record. I had come back home to Massachusetts, um, and we were just going over mixes and, and everything that we had done for, for a couple weeks when I was out there in L.A. tracking the vocals. And – um, we felt like, you know, there was something a little missing still to us. And um, so John had a that uh, intro acoustic riff to Springfield Summer. I'm not sure if you've checked out the album yet or not ahead of time, but um, there's this like, you know, that's how it starts. It's an intro acoustic riff. And he, that's all he had. It was like this kind of clip. And he sent it to me and I just uh, threw down like a quick um, kind of scat vocal, no lyrics, just kind of melody over it. And uh we kicked that little 30 second clip with my melody over it around for like a week and we just kind of fell in love with it. And it's kind of more based in this like major key. I had mentioned, you know, feels kind of crossover pop country R and B kind of song. And, um, you know, we fell in love with it and we just felt that we needed to make it a song. So, you know, I, I kind of put the rest of the instrumental together and ha- um, put the chorus together and, um, that ended up being like one of the favorite songs, I think, for the band on the record, just because it's um, it's one of those those new layers that I was talking about that uh, that we really just had the opportunity to kind of test our chemistry writing even remotely and uh, and kind of test those new waters of, of, a, of a stylistically a song that we've always wanted to do. Um, even in our, you know, our, our own personal, John's always wanted to do a song like that. So have I. So it was, uh, yeah, it was it was like kind of the or perfect organic song to kind of lend itself to the record. Well, I'm sure people are excited to hear these new songs out on the road. Do you have any idea when we might be able to expect some possible tour date announcements? So, I mean, new album means tour dates, so we know you're going on the road. Do you have any idea when we might find that out? Um, so I don't know exactly how in detail I can get uh, about that. I don't want to get in trouble. You know, I'm the new guy. <laughs> I don't want to get spanked, but uh, uh, I do know for a fact that there is um, – two tours that are being solidified right now and they're uh they're, they're actually pretty soon and uh i'm pretty sure that there's going to be an announcement uh on the day of record release so uh not too much longer here and we'll find all that out but yes there, we're going to be uh bad wolves will be very busy in 2022 how excited are you to play those first shows to to take the stage i got to imagine you know it's, it's just building up inside of you you can't tell like you said that and i just can't help but smile it's like <laughs> yeah. it's gonna be so fun man honestly uh we're all just you know we've all to this point been like uh just anticipating the hell out of re- releasing this album and um now we've now the the, the, the time is here you know midnight tonight eastern it, it releases and we can kind of get past that and now we're all just really looking forward that with that same anticipation uh for the live show because you know, it's one thing to listen to the record. Uh, you know, we all love love listening to the music and learning it. But, uh, you know, as we know that there's uh, 
there's just an intensity to, to the live show and, and hearing these songs loud and, you know, seeing the visual and everything is, is really going to kind of put it all together. We just, we can't wait. I know you're used to holding a guitar on stage. Have you decided what you're going to do with your hands yet? Now that you don't have to hold the guitar the entire time. <laughs> Dude, I've been asked that so many <laughs> times that I'm like, I sort of got like first show, I'm going to come out and like have my hands tied together or something like. Have you thought about just, Garth Brooks, like head microphone, possibly like do the headset and have hands free. Oh my God. Time? I might get like a little Britney Spears mic and yeah, do there some, you go. Like, <laughs> get, get some choreography going. Hey man, sky's the limit. Great idea. No, no, it's going to be fun though. It's um, I, I am very much looking forward to not being tied down to an instrument, to be honest with you. You know, it's been a long time of me being on stage with a guitar and a, uh, it's going to be pretty refreshing to be able to kind of put the mic in my back pocket and give high fives and have a sip on stage or whatever. So we'll see, you know? <laughs> well, I know the new album is coming out here in a few hours and I know people are excited to hear it and excited to see you guys back out on the road. Uh, before I let you go, I've got one last question. As I went through scrolling through social media, trying to prep for this interview, I noticed that you're a Miami Dolphins fan and I am a, I am a Detroit Lions fan, which is, uh, okay. wor- which is worse. Uh, just quickly <laughs> so you, we're both in the same boat. What, why do we, why do we keep doing this to ourselves? Uh, we must be gluttons for punishment <laughs> because, uh, I haven't had a good football season or at least a good, uh, a good um, emotion football season in a long time, man. But you know what? I'm a lifer. And, uh, as many times as I've wanted to jump the dolphin ship, I just can't, I can't find it in my heart to do it. So dolphin dolphins until they sell the team for life. And then, <laughs> then maybe I'll, I'll figure it out, but. Got to weird, be weird being a Dolphins fan up in New England. Oh, you have no idea how much <laughs> crap I get for that one. So, yeah, I can you know, especially, especially with the, this being Patriots land. Uh, yeah, that's a tough one. But it is fun for me because the Dolphins usually, for some reason, it could be the worst season ever. They show up against the Patriots. So, yeah. Well, I appreciate hey. you taking some – I mean, that's awesome. I mean, that's, I mean, that's the best you can hope for, I guess. You can't have everything. That's right. Well, I appreciate taking some time, man. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys out on the road. Looking forward to listening to the album, and uh, we will see you out there. Very, uh, we will see you out there very soon. Man, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for having us. And uh, yeah, we will. We'll see you out there hitting the ground, sprinting here. <laughs>